Hello, uh, good afternoon everyone, or good morning, or good night, wherever you are, and whenever you are watching this video. We are uh, fellow quantum computer enthusiasts from GNX, NSEC, and uh, also from other colleges, people are here. Uh, we are a group that is basically uh, spreading the knowledge of uh, quantum computers all across the first years and second year, uh, second year students who are interested but don't know where to start. So we have already done this pilot uh, session. Uh, we have done this pilot session with me and Ritojit M. We have discussed about uh, the basics of quantum computers and how they work. And Ritojit has discussed about the quantum, a few quantum algorithms, just the basic uh, idea so that people understand. Now, our uh, mission here is to tell people that you don't have to know the entire entire mathematics entire those hardcore mathematics or quantum physics to write uh, quantum computation codes or to execute quantum computation code it's pretty easy and right now uh, due to the advent of all these companies like ibm microsoft and google there are quantum computers right now in their uh, offices their workshops which are connected to cloud and we can right now, right at this moment, access those quantum computers. Uh, code, uh, we can write a code and execute there and get a result. So it's right now in our fingertips and it's available. So this is why the rise of quantum computers and uh, the work with quantum computers are on a level high. So without any delay, uh, I'll introduce myself. Hi, I'm uh, Shojano. You might know me as Sean. And here I have John Oprio with me, Obik, and uh, Oniket here. We will discuss. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the agenda of today's discussion. We will be discussing about what is quantum computer and why quantum computer and what is the difference uh, between classical computers in a very basic sense. And then uh, John Oprio will take over and he will discuss about the applications of quantum computers. And then uh, Obik will uh, take over and he will discuss about the maths and li linear algebra behind the basic maths and linear algebra just to get started with quantum computers. And then Aniket will show you around uh, the IBM Qiskit framework that uh, we have been using and we will be using for this uh, session. Now, this is just a session number one after the pilot session, which you may find in uh, the YouTube channel of GNX uh, NSEC. And we will also be doing this uh, kind of sessions more and more. And let us know what you want uh, from us so that we can, you know, uh, actually help uh, the people who want to get started with in quantum computation. So without any further delay, let's start. So why quantum computers and how did it all start? So the presence, we know the presence of quantum mechanics had always been there and humans just poured into uh, those realm after uh, in and around 1910s and 1920s when people started uh, discovering and seeing the strange phenomena that occurs subatomic level. Now, after uh, this, uh, phenomena were discovered uh, later in 40s and 50s uh, sir richard feynman uh, showed that you can use this uh, quantum mechanics to compute right to to compute and to uh, generate uh, results that are uh, intended for us and this quantum computers have uh, very much edge and power over the classical computers. Now, let me tell you what basic of classical computer is. Classical computers works on the classical mechanics and, and uh, uh, electromagnetism theory that uh, charges being carried over uh, the gates and computation occurs. It's pretty bulky and it's pretty, uh, the devices are big and they are not subatomic. Now, when we are going uh, smaller, when the chip is going smaller and smaller, then the quantum mechanical effect starts getting inside the chips. So we use that and that is being used by IBM and Google and uh, Microsoft, those companies who are making and using quantum computers regularly. Now, the idea is to use this quantum mechanical phenomenon like entanglement, teleportation and superposition or these phenomena to you know, write algorithms and execute and get the answer. So it's pretty easy. It's it's, it's pretty uh, it, it, if you see it in the uh, you know fundamental level, classical computers 
works on classical chips and quantum computers works on quantum chips classical computers take the advantage of classical mechanics along with electro <coughs> electromagnetism excuse me whereas quantum computers take the uh, advantage of quantum mechanics so uh, it's uh, it's pretty uh, self understandable but why quantum computers and why now like we have discussed why now because all these uh, companies are pushing uh, hard investing and uh, helping students all around to come up with uh, different uh, architectures frameworks and you know algorithms why why are they doing it now and why is it important why the transition between classical and quantum computers is important see we have used quant uh, classical computers for long there were uh, first uh, analytical engines mechanical quant computers then uh, slowly we transitioned uh, into the electronic computers but uh, quantum computers has this uh, amazing power over classical computers where it can it can uh, fasten it can fasten the uh, time of the algorithms that are used in classical computers in a very very high sense what what do i mean by this uh, i mean that for some like the people who are from the computer science domain will know for a uh, algorithm to run for a, a simple algorithm to run suppose uh, it takes o n square time o n square that we say order n square time quantum computers have proven to reduce the time to o n or o uh, o log n or something so it decreases the time uh, required for an algorithm to run and it is uh, so it is it's so important that i'll give you an, a real life example for encryption standard like we have used rsa algorithm for long every every encryption you see in and around uses some or the other form of rsa uh, cryptography now rsa uh, relies on prime factor factorization prime factorization and um, it is mathematically impossible for a supercomputer even to crack the code and it takes around 30 years to crack a simple rsa encryption but in the case of quantum computers sir peter shor has described in his algorithm that a simple quantum computer can break an uh, rsa encryption in merely 3 to 4 minutes so you see the power of quantum computers where it can take us so does that mean uh, we will have a quantum computer in 10 years in our desk that is no quantum computers are industrial machines it's like the first generation where you where we have seen nex and advax of classical computers we are right now there we are here in the gate based quantum uh, computers where we are tinkering with different gates and we are uh, seeing what it uh, what abstractions we can build over the basic quantum computers so right now in realm of classical computers you see this different level of abstraction has led us to uh, mobile phones laptops you know browsers web apps apps so we have no idea what quantum computers will help us in the future so this is just a, we are getting started and we are glad to help uh, students around and i am really thankful to gnx and obic to help out this session and from here uh, jonoprio will take over and he will explain you what are the applications uh, right now and in the future of quantum computers so john opriyo uh, you go ahead thank you sojanada for introduction introducing with the quantum computing and now i am john opriyo mitra and i would like to talk about the applications of the quantum computing so let me share the screen first so uh, let's start with the applications of quantum computing so uh, right now sojanada had told everything about the uh, why we need the quantum computing and what are the uses of quantum computing in our future so let's see on what and which field we can apply this quantum computing and what are the applications of it so uh, as he told that uh, as he, as he was talking about the classical computers but right now in this era we can't actually uh, use a quantum computer independently because quantum computing is right now is dependable on the classical computers so we need the classical computers as because uh, right now the quantum computer is not so much efficient to work stand alone theoretically the job that uh, a classical computer can do and quantum computer can also do the at the same job at the same amount of time but basically the quantum computers doesn't provide us the additional advantage over the classical computers but then uh, there will be a question that why we are opting or why we are uh, going towards the quantum computers as because there are few algorithms or few uh, few 
certain uh, algorithm to certain problems that have the significantly lower time complexities than that of the classical algorithms. That means if we just uh, work with a quantum computer, there are few algorithms which can it in which it can solve uh, at a lower amount, uh, lower or lesser amount of time with respect to the uh, classical computers. And one experiment was done by the uh, scientists uh, and with the Google AI researchers, and which is known as the quantum supremacy experiment, <laughs> where uh, they, they had used a programmable superconducting super processor and they had developed a 54 qubit processors. 54 qubit processors. Right now, we are using the uh, maybe we all are using you know 32 bits uh, computer uh, processors or 64 bit processors, but they had developed a 54 qubit processor and they named it as Sycamore, which is uh, comprised of fast and high fidelity quantum logic gates. So basically, when uh, the operation was performed, they had uh, given uh, they had gave a particular uh, algorithm, a particular problem to that uh, machine, and that then when the uh, when it calculated the result, it got within the 200 seconds. That is, uh, we can say it's three minutes and 20 seconds. And even the world's fa world's fastest supercomputer would take around 10,000 years to produce the similar output. That is, uh, after calculating we can say that around 3 million times faster uh, this uh, so uh, this quantum computer is around 3 million times faster than that of the world's fastest supercomputer so uh, now we can i hope uh, you we, you guys can uh, understand that how powerful this uh, quantum computer is and why we actually need the quantum computers right now okay so this is one of the application of uh, the quantum computing that is quantum simulation so uh, since the chemistry and the nanotechnology rely on understanding quantum systems and such systems are impossible to simulate in an efficient manner classically that means if we can use if we are use uh, using the classical computers we cannot simulate the uh, the systems with the chemistry and the nanotechnology systems so we need a classical uh, we don't we need a quantum computer that means a quantum simulation is required and it will help to simulate the behavior of atoms and particles at unusual conditions, which a classical computer cannot do. So basically, the reactions uh, can be performed with the help of the quantum simulation and on a obviously on a quantum computer, which a classical computer cannot do. And it is, uh, I think, it's uh, one of the most important application of quantum computing, that is quantum cryptography. And uh, nowadays, uh, we uh, all need. A protection or a privacy because uh, from the hackers because uh, in today's world we are using uh, many crypto systems which are nowadays uh, uh, helping to protect us or protect our privacy from uh, different type of hackers or hacking uh, hackers so but uh, in the recent days if uh, the quantum computing will arrive if the quantum computer arrives then it will be very much challenging to protect our privacy as the public Key crypto systems that are now used will become outdated in the years ahead. So it's going to be proved in our near future that no code is uncrackable. That means the code or the any type of code or uh, can be broken easily by the super com uh, super computer. Not sorry, uh, quantum computers. As uh, Sojanada had also also told that the uh, we can easily broke the broke through break, break through the break through different codes and through this uh, super quantum computer. So that will be very big challenging for us to protect our privacy in the future. So one possible way is to replace our entire crypto system with the new ones, which will be helpful to attack, uh, which will be helpful to resistant to the attacks by the super com uh, quantum computers. Quantum computing can itself can create encryption methods known as quantum cryptography, which can help us to resistant which can be uh, proved to be resistant to the attacks uh, uh, which uh, by the quantum computer itself now the quantum networks so basically the quantum networks uh, and the classical networks which we are using right now is not so much different so uh, there will be on one question again that why quantum networks then so this network can be used for the communication and computation both the first quantum network which was built was in USA and specifically it was 
using the technology of quantum key distribution and the company which had built this the qkd network works by transmitting an encoded key in the between endpoints over a fiber optical cable fiber optic cable and the ceo of this company had told that the quantum key distribution network can be used as a defensive measure before the unrivaled power of quantum computers become an offensive weapon so this qkd network can be used as a defensive measure uh, before the power of the quantum computers became an offensive weapon using quantum networks can uh, using quantum networks can also send the qubits from quantum one quantum processor to the another quantum processor over a long distance but uh, still now we are using cl classical networks which uh, through which we can you know uh, we can connect from one part of the world to the another part of the world but right now with the help of quantum networks it's not possible is because we had not uh, built up so much big network for the world so it will be uh, maybe time it will uh, take time to build such a network but soon in our future we can expect uh, that the, these type of networks can be built throughout the world and which will be very much helpful for uh, us to use those networks and by this the quantum networks can be uh, interconnected with the quantum quantum net uh, internet quantum internet supports many applications and the information that can be transmitted between the remote quantum processors so here the one quantum processor can send information to the another quantum processor through this quantum internet and most quantum internet protocols such as qkd in quantum cryptography is sufficient and the, of the in the if these processors are capable of preparing and measuring only a single qubit at a time so and uh, there's one uh, interesting thing in this uh, quantum network that if someone attempts to intercept the quantum key it destroys the qubit qubit's delicate quantum state and the information it holds alternate alternating the endpoints that an intrusion has occurred the detectability of the intrusions is such ensures the security of the transmission hence we can develop quantum communication using this networks as because they are highly secured when we are transferring the data as because you can see that when the when an intrusion will be occurred it will ensure that uh, the it, it, it can detect the intrusions which had occurred in this network so uh, this will be highly secured uh, network if we uh, if we can build such a network in uh, throughout the world it will be highly secure than that of the classical computer classical uh, networks and this is one of the network which had uh, been which was, which was built by the quantum exchange company in usa and this is uh, the network used uh, which was built by qkd that the quantum key distribution okay so this is one of the uh, one, it's also one of the uh, very interesting application which we can use where you can use the quantum computing nowadays uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence are very uh, trending technology right now it's as because most of the most of us were using this technology and uh, this technology had penetrated penetrated in almost every aspects in hum of humans life there are widespread applications of ai and ml and there are as the number of applications are increasing day by day it is becoming challenging for the classical computers to match up with the accuracy and the speed that is the classical comp it's very it's becoming tough day by day that the classical computers to handle those algorithms and to uh, compute those algorithms within uh, within giving the same accuracy and within the same speed so it's becoming challenging for the classical computers nowadays but here we can use the quantum computing or quantum computers and it can help in processing throughout the complex algorithms in very less time with compared to the classical computers which the traditional computers may be take uh, may take uh, more time to solve those complex algorithms whereas the quantum computers can take around uh, very less time with respect to the traditional computers so it can be a very uh, it can be a breakthrough breakthrough uh, if the first quantum computers arrives and if you can use the quantum computers for developing the machine learning uh, machine learning uh, applications or artificial application uh, artificial intelligence applications quantum computing in biopharma research and development in today's world the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies 
take up more than 10 years to discover a new drug and they often spend billions of dollars to bring it into the market and basically it is done by the trial and error method which is not only very expensive but also risky and challenging task to complete the companies take more and more time nowadays and even you can see in this time when uh, they are researching a particular drug it is taking a much time for them to bring it into the market that's because there are lots of procedures and they, they have to uh, use the trial and error method to check whether these drugs are efficient or not and whether this drug is helpful and whether this drug can be uh, uh, used for this particular uh, problem or not but in this field the quantum computing can help a lot quantum computer has the potential to significantly accelerate enhance the quality and reduce the time and cost of data research and development processes so this can empower the computational com chemists to make new discoveries faster which could lead a cure or to cure a range of diseases so here the quantum computing can be very much helpful as it can accelerate this type of uh, accelerate the potential and it can uh, increase the enhance the quality of that drug uh, and it can also it will also reduce the time and the cost in research and development uh, right now it's it can be a very big uh, thing if we introduce this type of uh, technologies in this field even the quantum computing has the ability to change the very definition of molecular comparison by enabling pharmaceutical and material science companies to develop methods to analyze large scale mo molecules so quantum computing can quantum computing can also help to develop the methods to, which can analyze the large scale of large scale molecules at a time which a classical computer uh, which we can't do using the classical computing here if the uh, quantum computing is introduced in this field it will be also possible to compare molecules that that are much larger which can open the door for more pharmaceutical pharmaceutical advancement and cure a range of diseases so uh, this quantum computer can again help to compare uh, the large molecules which uh, nowadays we can't do with the help of the uh, classical computers or classical computing so it can be a breakthrough which can, which will be very much helpful in uh, for the entire world so uh, <coughs> these are some of the applications of the quantum computing and linear algebra is also a part of a quantum computing and it's one of the prerequisite for the quantum computing so i would like to uh, introduce abhik banerji to come up with the linear algebra part for the quantum computing abhik banerji yeah am i audible uh, yes you are audible yeah so i guess this is the first time when uh, the mic has properly worked in my session anyways uh, thank you jonopriyo it was a great uh, talk it was actually John Pierre's first talk as a part of GNX. He is a student of Techno India, you know, uh, Techno India. What should I say? Yeah, John Pierre, could you please uh, introduce yourself once more? Uh, sorry. Could you please introduce yourself once more? Oh yeah. Uh, this is John Pierre Mitra, and I am from uh, Techno International New Town, and it's uh, formerly known as Techno India College of Technology. Uh, although I am not uh, a student of Netaji, but still I am, you know. In this session, and thank you, Obik Banerjee, to call me up for this session. And I, I think you should continue. Now. That is that is basically the plan, right? To include students from different colleges and different fields, so that it, yeah. it's it's inclusive growth. And you from that college will be able to share your ideas and thoughts, and your this knowledge of quantum computers to your fellow students, which we cannot go and do it there, right? So I won't waste time. Back to you, Obik sure so yeah uh thanks again thanks to john Opryo, thanks to shonda thanks to aniket uh for you know facilitating this we are trying to make this as interactive as possible in fact you can join us during these meets if you want to so today i'm going to talk about uh you know the maths essentials the very beginner stuff that is required aniket will uh, give a demo of things on this kit 
so I'm just going to discuss what's required before you, uh, you know, get your hands dirty with Qiskit. As for the advanced stuff, we will go, uh, we will discuss them as we go along in future sessions, of course. So without further ado, please uh, confirm that you can see my screen. Uh, yes, we can see your screen. Great. So we can see your screen. Yeah. So the maths, the beginner maths. So day itself, we will uh, talk about basis, vector representation, linear combinations, bracket notations, inner product, orthogonality, poly operators, so basic poly operators, and all. And uh, you know, get a feedback from you guys as to how you would like to us uh, to proceed. So when you are uh, thinking about, you know, you have bits in classical uh, computers and you have qubits in quantum computers. So when you are thinking about quantum computers, you have a qubit and you would uh, represent that its uh, state some, as something like this, right? So you have shy and it's just a fancy symbol equals, uh, yeah, I guess I prefer this one out. Sorry about that. Yeah, so you have shy, and uh, that equals alpha times something that surrounds zero, and then beta some by something that surrounds one, right? So what are these? Uh, firstly, think of the zeros and ones as bases. So right now you can see these two-dimensional matrices, right? So we have uh, what is known as a Hilbert space, it's kind of like an abstract Euclidean space, if you will. And these zeros and ones, these can, uh, you know, represent every point on that Hilbert space. This uh, specific zero, this, sorry, yeah. So this, what you see, a vertical uh, line followed by zero and then a lesser than sign. This is uh, known as a ket notation, ket zero. And it's given by uh, this matrix. 1 over 0. And uh, then you have, this is known as ket1, right? And that is represented by 0 over 1. The easiest way to remember it is like you have an arrow, but only the arrow's head is uh, re uh, replaced by a 0, right? So you have, it's, uh, it's trying to point downwards, and this one is trying to point upwards. So that's 1. So these are the basis vectors, and these can be used to represent a two-dimensional Hilbert space, right? So if you have more dimensions, let's say you have three dimensions or four dimensions, you would find uh, more uh, elements in this specific column matrix. And these two matrices, these are actually uh, linearly independent and uh, orthogonal as well. So there's shy, shy, uh, sorry, shy, but it's actually a linear combination of zeros or at the ket zero and ket one and now come let's come to alpha right alpha and beta so what are these alphas and betas so alpha and beta these are uh, complex numbers right and this one alphas uh, sorry mod alpha mod alpha that mod alpha square if you don't know what that means would essentially give you the magnitude of that com uh, complex number the constraint on alpha and beta is that they must always be equal to zero. Their square of modulus must always be equal to zero. So this is where you uh, represent the vector, uh, the vector of uh, zero and one, and the linear combination of those vectors gives you the state of the qubit. Now uh, here, since you have, you can see right, is that. Uh, Zero can zero can be represented as this column vector, so you can uh, multiply that alpha with get zero, get zero's representation, and then sum it with the similar uh, formation with beta, and you get this column matrix where uh, the elements are alpha and beta, right? And from there on, you can uh, identify actually what the basis vectors are. So in a way, in a two-dimensional Hilbert space. Linear combinations of uh, this two states of qubits, the zeros and ones, and uh, a linear combination of those zeros and ones can give you uh, the state of the qubit. So yeah, let's come to bracket 
or uh, direct not uh, notation. So as I was mentioning, this is specifically known as a get. It's quite opposite to what is known as a bracket, right? So together you combine and you get bracket. So it's actually uh, something formulated by Paul Dirac. He's a Nobel laureate who shared his uh, Nobel Prize with Schrodinger. So it's like this. So you have, suppose, let's say, a vector representation. Then you take its transpose, right? So this is the column uh, matrix. The transpose is basically a row matrix. And then you have the element-wise conjugate. What does this mean? So let's uh, rewind to this one specific, where you have uh, Jai, another vector, and it's represented by alpha and beta, right? And as I said, alpha and beta are two complex numbers. And so you have element-wise conjugate where uh, this, the elements in uh, this specific matrix is actually the complex conjugate of the elements in this step two matrix, of uh, step two row matrix. Now here it might be apparent because, uh, let's face it, two right now here, you may see it may seem like a real number, but in fact, it's a real number because uh, its complex part is zero. And here you have 4i, right? So you take the complex conjugate, and for a real number, the con complex uh, conjugate is itself, while for uh, the an imaginary number, you get minus 4i. And that itself gives you uh, the bra notation. You just do a simple matrix multiplication of these two, and th that gives you a scalar, right? And it's easy. It's really easy to get the scalar of a specific uh, matrix using a bracket notation. So you have a get, you have a, as you have a bra, you have a get, and uh, you get a bracket notation. But what does this give you? As you may uh, remember, I told you before only that uh, this essentially represents a vector, right? So a vector is something which has a magnitude and direction, but here we are getting a scalar. Now this itself uh, represents the length you can say a measure of length of that vector in the Hilbert space. Moving on to Pauli operators. Uh, so these are operators which act on qubits. So Q, you may think of this U as a qubit, and this might be the qubit's state, right? And you have these uh, two by two matrices, in, if you were to think of it mathematically, which act on those qubit states. And it changes those states. So you have, first of all, X, then y, z, and last but not least, the identity. So what are these? So think of this x operator as something which gives this vector a 180 degree uh, rotation on the x-axis, right? Think of every vector being represented by a uh, three-dimensional space. In fact, there is something similar known as a block sphere. Aniket will uh, demonstrate that uh, when he is going to show you the live coding. Uh, so you have this. <clears throat> this specific vector, you uh, make the x operator work on it, and that rotates that whole vector by 180 degree in the x dimension. Similarly, for y, you have a rotation of 180 degree in the y plane, and same for z. As for the identity, it's just that the identity matrix when act, or the, or the or identity operator acting on a, a specific vector case itself only. That's about the end of it. Uh, last but not least, thinking quantum, as uh, you may know by now, that we are in a specific uh, step in the history of our computing, where uh, we can say quantum computers are in the stage where the classical computers were back in their first generation. So you cannot really implement uh, something as complex as a ResNet, YOLO, or single shot detectors, neural networks using quantum computing, but quantum computing and classical computing, these two can combine and uh, they can have a significant power. So let's think about uh, something uh, like the predicate logic, right? Uh, if, you are, if you have some basic idea about predicate logic, it's like you have a statement and you try to represent it using, uh, let's say, a few set of symbols. So 
what's the thinking process there? You have that statement. You try to divide that statement into specific parts. And each part you represent it by a symbol. And then by a combination of such symbols, you can represent it the whole statement. Right. So that is basically uh, how you get that predicate logic. It's basic. It's complete basic. In fact, you have something similar to that in the quantum computing realm. And uh, it's known as quantum predicate logic. We might just cover it in the future sessions. It's, it's a bit advanced for this beginner session itself. Uh, that's about it, I guess. Yeah. Moving on to Aniket Das. Aniket is actually uh, one of the most enthusiastic in our bunch. He's the youngest one as well. Over to Aniket. Yeah, unmute. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Aniket Dash. I am from Netaji Shubash Engineering College, and I am from second year. And yes, also a proud partner and a part of GNX Kolkata and also the Q Kolkata. And I am here to present you the hands-on uh, training on some quiz kit tutorials and also show you the environment uh, in a bigger way. Uh, so let's dive into the field. And I am now presenting my screen. And it will be, I think, visible. And now, and I all will also mute my video. That's so that will it will be easier for me to carry on the whole process. Uh, wait one second. Uh, I think it's visible now. Hello. Yes, it's visible. Yeah. OK. Now, good to go. Now, first of all, I must say that every circuit is comprised of some basic gates. You know, in your field, you learn some classical gates that, that are used in many fields of electronics. And you can build any type of gadgets, any type of electronics with the simple gates. I'm so in quantum world, there is also a concept of gates. As uh, Ovik Banerjee show you, there is a concept of poly gate. There is a concept of tofuel gate. And I will show you the different type of gates and their application is quiz kit. OK. First of all, now, first of all, you need to install the quiz kit package from the CMD itself. You can use Anaconda prompt also and also import the quiz kit visualization library for hands on in quantum computing because in classical computing is hard to uh, build a quantum algorithm without a simulator. So our quiz kit library um, provide us the tools and the gadgets dive into the subject. So first of all, I will get to my code. That is first, uh, I will explain you the gates, define gates. The first gates in our my target is the poly gate. The poly gate is the, uh, you can say it is a classical not gate, but in a bigger way. So in poly gate, there is a matrix that is, uh, in poly x matrix, poly y matrix, and poly z matrix, there are three types of poly gates are possible. Actually, gates are um, shown like a matrix. Uh, you can see the the five. Uh, I am selecting the tab. You can see this x matrix is the zero one one zero matrix. Actually, it is in Markdown notation. There will be a this is a 2D matrix of 0, 1, 1, 0, and which is multiplied with a 1, 0, that is the 0 qubit. And what I what we are getting by simple mathematical multi matrix multiplication, we are getting back that is a 0, 1, which is the uh, representation of qubit 1. That is, it is performing a not get in not get by reversing the qubit operation or the qubit state. So first of all, let's uh, code a basic quantum circuit. That is, you can see, I am declaring a, 
I am declaring a variable. Let's see the quantum sphere and quantum circuit one comma zero, which is number of bits I wanting to represent. That is a one, and zero is the number of C bits. The C bits are used to um, show the output bits of the logic and so as well as that you see the number of variable I am using and with the help of dot x operation that dot x is the operation of a not gate or the so called Pauli's x gate to the state qubit of zero that is zero I am running as a parameter and let's show by running the cell sorry there is something i think missed out something okay okay you missed out the c the circuit cir c y uh, oh yeah yeah uh, okay. thanks oh yeah c she should be in caps yeah now you can see there is a i am developing about one bit i have first of all i have set the c bits to zero but there is a temporary error in the file so I have a, I have called a null variable C there and called the QC QC dot X upon the qubit zero and what should be the result? The state of the qubit should be changed from zero to one. We will show you. Okay, the name is QC. You can see. Change this to QC. Okay, so see the this is called a plot vector or plot blotch vector multicolor ve vector plot. Plot blotch vector is a representation of qubit. You can see the Z axis is compromised of two values that is 0 and 1, which is which are the eigenvalue for the Z axis, and we have X and Y. In qubits, we have uh, as told by Big Energy, the qubit X uh, are mixed variable or can possess a mixed state between the 0, 1, 0 and 1. So we plot the probabilities. But in my case, I have initialized with the value of zero, so which is a certain value for the QC. And so, uh, when I applied the not gate here in dot C product, uh, the plot here gives you a perfect one, which is a certain value, which gives you the probability of hundred uh, percent. That's how the not gate appears to applied on the qubit qc uh, and in this line of code i would like to explain you about the backend program the qs kit has a several backend programs in it uh, one of is the aer another is aura but aer gives you the backend to uh, simulate some quant uh, quantum computing products uh, and qubits up to 30 and you can scale a quite lot of programs in the scale and you can show the output as a plot as i shown you the shown to you uh, okay the uh, this is the typical syntax for doing so and you are just changing the backend to the er.get backend to the state vector simulator uh, 
which helps you to run the quantum computing in your classical computer okay next dive into some more of them so polis gate have another several topics that is the y gate and the z gate the polis y gate is also there which has a matrix value i can say matrix represents rather matrix representation uh, as 0 minus i and i 0 the i is uh, i is represented as j in case of quiske uh, but yes that's the representation of y and here if i using the qc y 0 that means i am doing the y get on the qubit 0 let's see what's happened to the program let's delete delete this one and run again the back end program and see the plot watch plot vector representation of the output as you can see the value is not changes but what happens in case of y gets polis y gets i can tell you the, uh, sorry for the interruption uh, okay similarly to the x gate the p and z poly matrices also acts as a y and z gate in on quantum circuits the y gate uh, gives you a rotation about a pi around the y and the z axis the representation is simple which when we applying a not get in the block sphere the there is a rotation about the axis we are defining if we are rotating about x then we are then we are getting a plot opposite to the axis and so on as well as in y and z in case of y and z we don't use so much that of for now so i am showing you the generic representation of the circuit through code let's delete this one sorry okay this one will show you the z uh, do the z gate on the output zero sorry is the qubit zero and then you see dot draw which will draw the same type of representation this is the circuit quiske circuit representation to uh, for only the academic purpose and also give you the uh, greater knowledge about the circuit you are using uh, and mp1 is the parameter which will define how will how will the plot looks nothing else let's run okay uh, so now I, we are discussing about the polygate y and polygate z uh, upon the qubit 0 uh, here we are the, here we are coding that qc dot y0 uh, are giving me the y uh, the polygate y about the y axis uh, and your dot z gives us the poly not gate uh, about the z axis and we are now showing you the output of the result uh, here you can see there is a qc bit the q bit we have initialized here uh, have a three phases of, of the algorithm that is the first we have done a dot x product that is a poly x not get on the cube then there is a y and there is a z and that's all the main thing about the poly get it create the inverse of the actual state and gives the rotation around the axis we have defined and 
then the we are coming to the next uh, gate i think which is the hadamard gate the hadamard gate or the h gate is a fundamental quantum gate we can say it allows to move away from the poles of the bloch sphere and create superposition of zero and one which are which is mainly the uh, mainly the but i can say the main property of qubit i that is it holds the both property of a bit zero bit and one bit and hadamard gate allows us to uh, bring up a probability of zero and one in a certain calculation uh, for a hadamard gate we using a typical matrix representation as 1 by root 2 into 1 11 in the row vector 1 minus 1 let me write the representation for you for the smoother understanding the uh, typical hadamard gate is defined as h equal to wait a second yeah this total multiplied by 1 by 2 One by root over of two, and this gives you the Hadamard gate operation over a typical qubit. It's a single qubit operation, I can say, and it will help you to superimpose a uh, okay. Now you can see now the. Hadamard is gate is applied on the qubit zero after having a not gate over here, and then we have applied the Hadamard gate. Now see what happened to our large vector. you can see the hadamard git operated over here the actual you can see after the not get the output should be one but it's rotate about the x axis and gives the following output and that's uh, okay as you have seen that i have applied a not get and then a hadamard get open it and then i have plot the Bloch vector diagram on the specific QS, QOC qubit, and here is the plot. You can see that Hadamard gate is applied, and I have seen a rotation on the vector. So the vector has a probability of fifty-fifty now. The probability of not zero and not one. It is. it is between them uh, so now gets continue with the another gate i have seen the hadamard gate and then uh, after plotting the bloch vector we should uh, come to the new gate that is the phase shift gate the phase shift gate of quantum computer helps you to shift the uh, or the map the data uh, around the one axis without changing the base value of zero and how to do it it's the case so let's get started with the phase shift the phase shift gate is also termed as the arc phi gate the uh, phi here is a parameter which we will run in the qubit to give it a rotation the phi value can be anything 
uh, angle generally i will show you the demonstration by giving the phi value of uh, pi by 4 and then it is uh, it is thus parametrized and uh, it you can see that you will see actually you will see uh, it rotates about uh, theta angle theta around the z axis in general case of quizkit and uh, for the metric represent representation of the phase shift gate we use a two, two by two dimensional matrix where the rows are one zero and zero and another is e to the power j phi or i phi the e to the power j phi is a classical concept of the com quantum physics that e to the power j phi has a value over up 0 to 1 and it provides a unit vector representation of the qubit we have supposed to create and thus the qubit has a mixed probability of 0 and 1 and of course the must thing is that the phi must be a real number otherwise the program will not work let's get started started with the r gate i have already quoted some lines for the r gate here because our time is very short uh, the process is very simple uh, the qc that is the again the qubit value uh, and i have created the quantum circuit one that is i have initialized only one quantum bit here and then the dot rz that is the operation of the art uh, our gate that is the phase shift gate or the r5 gate and the pi by 2 is the parameter i have told you before and then qz draw you can see the block diagram here that means that it has been applied let's run this cell let's get the output as you have seen the output is not changed in the large vector diagram do you know why because the changes in the z axis rotation the z axis rotation has an own two eigenvalues that is 0 and 1 as we have certainty over zero here that is there is no change in the plot uh, but in the future cases of or in our future sessions you will see a huge application of the phase shift get there next come to uh, simple three simple gates uh, quantum gates that is the i gate the identity gate identity gate rather the s gate and uh, S gate is also known as the root Z gate, I must say, and then the T gate. Also, we have some. Also, we have a gate that is mm, uh, the universal gate or the U gates. But uh, for this session, the universal uh, universal gate is uh, our out of scope because the time is very short here we have to wrap up uh, first uh, so we will talk about only the three gates here uh, the i gate and s gate uh, and the t gate and we will eventually return to the u gate in our next session so uh, let's come to the s gate first the next gate to maintain is the s gate sometimes not as the root z gate as i have mentioned earlier this is in this is a typical case of R5 gate or the shift gate I have mentioned earlier, which where the phi value is pi by 2. The, the value of pi pi by 2, it does a quarter turn around the blood sphere, which gives you a nice probability. Uh, it is important to note that unlike every gate introduced in this chapter or I have told you in this session uh, the edge gate is not seen on inverse 
the inverse and inverse of s gate and s gate is totally different so let's move to court okay here is the is get similar notations are there the quantum dot s applies the s get qubit to the qubit zero and we apply s dj that is the inverse gate or inverse z root z gate to the zero the output shows as the following block diagram Let's plot the blotch vector here also. Okay, as you have seen that I have drawn the blotch vector, but it's showing the same output as I have not done. I have done nothing because that I have. Use the S zero gate, the apply S gate, and then again I have applied the inverse S gate there. So wait a second, I have shown you the wrong plot. Uh, yeah, actually the output is same, so I have ignored. But here is the, the qubit that should be same, and Let's quote this line. Run it again. Okay, as you have seen, the S gate is applied to the qubit one, and thus it make a rotation of pi by two around the z axis. The z axis, the rotation of the z axis is kind of fixed for the Quisquid environment, but with the further coding and mentioning you can change the axis also and the change of axis of rotation which is nice to go in the later topics and then we have come to the t gate the t gate is very commonly used it uh, it is another type of phase shift gate i must say we have discussing about phase shift gates for a long time because it is also part of the phase shift gate the t gate gives you a rotation of five pi by four that is a quarter of pi and the represent matrix representation of t gate is in the row is one zero and the second row is zero and e to the power j pi by four the j phi here phi is only j by 4 otherwise the matrix representation is same as the r phi gate the z as like the s gate the t gate is also represented as the fourth root of the z axis and the scaling happens Okay. Here are the basic gates and another gate I have need to mention is the I gate, which is is the identity gate. As you can say, it is kind of like a buffer because it has a it is a I gate as the full form of identity. The it is an identity matrix of two by two in general cases. Uh, the ID gate or identity gate does nothing with the output. Uh, it returns back the same result, but uh, it does not uh, change the qubit state at all. But it uh, so you may wonder that why it is considered to be a gate. But the two main results are there to consider it is as the gate because 
why need is uh, because the gate why we are using gates we are using the gates to make the complex algorithms and more complex quantum circuits uh, after all and they are the like the building blocks so we are using it them in the mathematical calculations and as well as for the identity gates we are using them in uh, calculations uh, how can we use uh, such a gate uh, you can say uh, the proving uh, the x gate is the inverse of itself we can do by the identity gate and non operations are there some in some typical cases we need to run some uh, run oper do nothing operations uh, to what i can say take some space in between then we can use the identity case and that's how i can show you the i gate because it's not it's not possible to show you the effect of the i gate because the effect is same uh, because the state is not changed it's just take a time uh, as i told you the matrix uh, representation of i gate is similar as the identity matrix of 2 by 2 and that's all i must say and we will discuss the universal gates later on and now go back to the shonda he will conclude the session shonda back to you so hi everyone uh, we had a session uh, that highlighted all the single qubit gates that we couldn't do in the first pilot session but here we could and uh, we had some network issues obviously because of covid 19 times first of all we want to thank all the frontline workers the, those people who are working day and night to uh, control and uh, sustain the disease spread of the disease we thank you and secondly it has transformed our life so much uh, that we are uh, like used to uh, get means um, we should get used to this new norms of wearing mask and keeping a better hygiene all around us to keep uh, people around us safe and to keep us safe so uh, with that we would like to uh, thank uh, aniket abhik and jono priyo who has who had to go because of his urgent work during the session so uh, thank you people and uh, this is this is just this is the second session after the pilot session where we discussed all the uh, single qubit gates and we have like this uh, we have sessions like this lined up uh, that is to be streamed and uploaded in youtube for everyone uh you are invited uh, to comment on this uh, to share suggest uh, to share suggestions to tell us what to do next so that we also have we also know what uh, you people want who are getting started with quantum computation we have got a uh, simulation of the multi qubit gates we have got simulation of uh, uh, several quantum algorithms that are going to come in the upcoming sessions by us and we have also uh different we, in in q kolkata we have got uh, quantum computing researchers and practitioners who are uh, who will be there in this upcoming sessions presenting their ideas and thoughts and also teaching you about uh, different algorithms so that's it uh thanks a lot and i would i would like to uh, share the i would like to share the uh, Twitter handle of everyone so that you could uh, contact us if you need to. So, yeah, this is the sheet. And thank you. See you next time.